Hey guys, Coach Tom again. This is lesson two of our beginner forehand ground stroke series. So make sure that you guys have watched lesson one, that you've gone through and done the drill, you've done the little test, you can hit the ball within that bucket area six, seven out of 10 times, and you're feeling pretty comfortable because we don't want to back up until we're ready to do so. Okay, so this lesson two, um, again, why we're doing this, we want to have confidence. We want to be able to feel comfortable hitting these shots when we back up to the baseline. And if we can kind of make a progression from the service line now to this three-quarter court line and then back up to the baseline, we're going to be feeling a little bit more comfortable and confident than if we just go running back to the baseline and start wailing away. We'll have a little bit better understanding of the theory of tennis, of really kind of what we're looking to do and the ground strokes and we can just kind of build on where we started in lesson one. Okay, so now that we're backing up you guys and it's gonna be the same thing in lesson three but now we're backing up, we've got more court to cover which means a couple of things. One, we've gotta hit the ball a little bit deeper into the court. I didn't say harder, okay? You might have to add a little bit of pace, sure, um, but really we wanna add more height because more pace means less consistency. So we've got more court to cover, but it also means we've actually got more court to hit to. So there's a good and a bad side to that, okay? So as you can imagine, yes, the footwork's gotta get a little bit better than it was when we were up on the service line. So one of the big things that happens as we back up is we start to kind of, we kind of get this, we adopt this good enough mentality where we kind of, the ball's here and we just, eh, it's good enough. It went over, it went in. Um, but we don't wanna hit four or five or six out of 10 balls into the court when we're playing in a rally. We want to hit seven or eight or nine out of 10 balls into the court. And what that comes down to, again, is, is good footwork, good movement, and good positioning. But it also comes down to a linear versus an angular swing, okay? Um, I'm gonna give you guys a diagram on this. I'll, I'll go back and, and, and throw this down on the whiteboard and kind of show you what I'm talking about. But really what it comes down to, um, a linear, a, a, an angular swing is basically I come here and I slap at the ball, right? And that happens more often when we don't turn. So if I'm here, I'm playing, and I just kind of go like this, I end up kind of slapping the ball, okay? If you're looking from this other camera, you can see that doesn't look very good, right? But if I can get a turn, I can actually swing with a little bit more linear motion. So really what we're working on from this position Yes, our footwork, yes, we're gonna make our swing a little bit bigger, but we're trying to make sure that our swing is linear as opposed to angular. All right, you guys, so what we're talking about here is this linear versus angular swing, right? The idea of the, the kind of stepping out this slappy swing, that's your more angular swing versus turning and actually stepping through and making a more linear swing. And what it looks like, right, when you slap at the ball, we're hitting this way, by the way, okay? So when you slap at the ball, you get this big arcing kind of angular swing, right? Versus when you actually step in, okay? So you can see there's a pretty distinct difference between those two swing paths, right? So you're in the first one, your racket's moving nice and straight. Sorry, the first one was the, the linear, the angular one, okay? But we're moving that kind of angular swing path versus this linear one. And what ends up happening is that if you look at where the, the swing path is actually going straight, where the ball might go into the court, that's about it on that kind of angular swing, right? That real slappy swing. So anything that you hit outside of that area is probably gonna go wide left or right, okay? So you're reducing your contact zone. But if you look at this one, look at how long, I mean, it's, it's a much bigger contact zone, right? That racket is moving straight in a much longer line for a much longer period of time. And so you're getting a much better result and much more consistency with that nice linear swing. Okay, so you guys got that diagram. You see kind of how this works. Remember, the, the biggest thing is that if you're just gonna stand there and stick your racket out and swing, that's where that angular swing comes from and you're going to end up spraying balls wide left wide right whatever because your contact point your contact zone is so small but if you can get a good turn and have a nice linear swing you get a much longer contact zone and you can end up with better results even if your timing is a little bit off okay the other thing that we've got to think about from back here is our ball height 
We talked about in lesson one about string position, and it's the same thing here. We just have to learn how to adjust that string position in order to get the desired ball height. Um, this will change as our level develops. There's, a, there's other factors that control ball height, but for now, as a beginner, we're still just working with string position. So again, rem and remember, when you guys change, it's changing your grip. It's not just flipping your hand around. So tinker with it, see what works for you guys, right? Hit five or six or 10 or 20 balls and see what different grips mean and, in terms of how the ball goes over the net, height-wise, depth-wise, all that stuff. So make sure that if you guys are practicing that, if you're working on that ball height, keep the swing the same and then just adjust your string position and see what the results are and tinker with it and play with it and see what works for you. Okay, so reality, all we're doing is we're making that swing a little bit bigger. So if I'm here and I'm hitting my lesson one, the shot we hit in lesson one, turn, step, swing, that ball's not even gonna go over the net in this one because I'm further back, right? So I've gotta swing a little bit bigger, right? So if you're looking at this swing, let's, let's, we're gonna assume I already turned. If this, right, if that's my level one swing or my lesson one swing, all I'm gonna do instead of this backswing is this backswing. And instead of this follow through, this follow through. And notice I didn't come around Again, that's that angular swing we don't want. I just went further forwards. Okay, if you notice, my elbow kind of moves with that swing. And you can see the racket head is staying in a pretty good straight line, right? If I turn this way, right, if I don't use that elbow and I end up coming around the ball, that ball is going to spray all over the place. But if I can almost use my elbow as a piston and push forwards, that's good linear motion, okay? So again, we're just making that backswing and follow through just a teeny bit bigger. And if you notice, right, so if here is my lesson one backswing, here, oh, wait a minute, what just moved? If this is my lesson one backswing, here's my lesson two backswing, right? What'd you guys notice? I didn't do this, did I? I didn't just reach my racket back further. I actually turned, right? So you can see my shoulders, my hips, my core, I turned. So turn, right? It's about that body turn, keeping your shoulders and your core and everything working in one piece in, in, in unison. It's actually what we call a unit turn, right? So don't just go throwing your racket back further. But it's basically just, right? Again, we're going to assume I've already turned. It's a little bit bigger backswing, a little bit bigger follow through. Um, and that's it. Now, as we said before, footwork is everything. So just making the swing a little bit bigger and having that linear swing, that's not really just it. You actually have to move a little bit more, a little bit more quickly and a little bit more efficiently because the cord is getting bigger, right? So if I'm over here, it's turn. You guys notice I had to move a little bit more. There were a couple more steps in there. There's a little bit more energy and activity to that swing because I've got more area to cover. And remember, that position and that balance, they're huge. You've got to have them, okay? So make sure you guys are moving well to this ball. All right, so that's it for our lesson two. Um, it's the same thing I want you guys to do as you did in the first one. We're gonna set up a bucket or some kind of target on the other side of the net. You're looking for six or seven out of 10 that are you know, within six to 10 feet of that bucket. Okay, that's the consistency. That's the, that's the comfort level we want before we start backing up. Now, a couple of things to remember. Make sure you guys are moving your feet. Okay, the, the, I can't even, again, I can't tell you, I can't continue to tell you how important, actually I can continue to tell you, and I'm going to continue to tell you, footwork is everything, you gotta have it, okay? So, good footwork. A little bit bigger backswing, a little bit bigger follow through, a little bit, not much. We're still not worried about power, and as you'll start to learn from my lessons, you're really never worried about power. Um, I'll make the blanket statement, more power, less consistency, okay? Don't worry about power. Uh, the other piece is obviously remember that linear versus angular swing, and that starts with a good turn to the ball, right? This type of positioning, this type of, right, if I'm, if I'm here and I lean, that's not gonna give me a good linear swing. I've gotta turn, set up, and swing through the ball. That's where I'm gonna get that good linear motion from. Okay, so what did we learn today? We learned how to hit a little bit more 
aggressive, a little bit bigger. I don't want to use the term aggressive, so let's not say that. A little bit bigger forehand, right? So we can cover more court, we can get the ball further over there. We gained a little bit more confidence with that in terms of our comfort level so that we can back up and feel comfortable rallying with a partner. Um, and the other thing we're, we're learning, and that's one of the things that I really want to stress here, I want to give you guys the tools to teach yourselves, right? So I'll tell you the things that we need to work on, give you some ideas on kind of some drills and some things we can practice, but you guys have to go out there and actually do it, right? And if you watch these videos and if you kind of pay attention to them and you give yourself a couple of little things to think about, you can get out here and you can do this stuff on your own, I promise you. And you know, the nice, super nice thing about that is it saves you a lot of money. Um, tennis doesn't have to be an expensive sport. You can buy a really nice brand new racket. I bought this racket online for about $75. Um, you can go to the Goodwill and get one for probably five bucks. Can of balls is $3. Public courts are free, right? So it doesn't have to be this crazy expensive sport. This video for you right now, this is free, right? So get out there and play and enjoy it. You guys can go out, bang around for an hour, get a good sweat on, get good exercise, have good fun, good laughs, and enjoy this, and then go out and have the rest of your day, right? So get out there and do this, practice this stuff, okay? Now we guys, we're backed up a little bit. I said I want you guys, and I do, I want you guys just to have a couple of balls, just drop them, right? Just drop them and hit them because you got good control, but I also want you guys to, to get out there and start hitting with friends because that's the eventual goal. So right now, pause the video, text somebody, email somebody, better yet, call somebody because that's a little, more, a little bit more personable. Um, but find somebody that you can get out there and hit with. Um, and if you don't have somebody that you can hit with today, that's fine. Set up a time, set up a schedule. Um, but try to find somebody who you can get out there and you can practice with and they can kind of take this journey with you. Find somebody who's roughly on your level and you guys can do this together. That's it, you guys. Send me your questions, send me your comments. Remember, I'm your coach now. I'm here to help you guys. We're gonna do this together. So make sure you guys, if you have questions, if there's things that make sense, don't make sense, work, don't work, let me know and we'll do this together. I love you guys, I appreciate you coming out. Send me your questions again, let me know what's up and I'll see you guys on the next one.